Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining me today. I have had a lot of requests asking me to tell my story about how I converted, uh, reverted from uh, Christianity to Islam. It really all started when I was a teenager and I was living up in Canada and I was on a bus and I met a man from Saudi Arabia. And he was telling me a little bit about the Quran and telling me about Saudi Arabia. And he had given me a gift, which was a ring with a blue stone in it. And I held on to that ring for quite some time. I didn't really think about the Quran or the religion or anything like that for many years to come. And then I had uh, actually another experience about probably eight, maybe even ten years farther down the road in my life where I was on the internet and I was very uh, interested in computers and photography and things like that when computers were out when they first came out. And uh, so... I had a web TV and I was playing around on the internet on my web TV and uh, a person from Saudi Arabia, he said that he was a prince and he started talking to me on the internet and so I, I had a few discussions with him, I thought he was very interesting, he tried to ask me about the Quran and tell me a little bit about the religion and I really didn't... Um, I really didn't like connect with it or associate with it. I was confused a little bit and I um, really kind of didn't focus on that. Um, he asked me later if I would marry him and I told him no because I was actually unmarried at the time but I told him no because in my mind I had uh, an idea that I would be in some palace somewhere in Saudi Arabia with like maybe 50 other wives. <laughs> I had this harem idea in my head that that's the way it was, you know, when you married um, a prince. So I wasn't interested in that. And so I, perhaps I was wrong. Uh, but at the time, that's my thought because I didn't have any experience with Arabs or being in a Muslim country. I had never been out of the United States, Canada, and Mexico. Those were the only three countries that I had experienced in my life at the time. I really didn't give the Quran another thought. Uh, I didn't understand really what Islam was. I actually thought it was a place, um, not a religion. <laughs> So uh, many more years went by and I ended up buying a Quran from a bookstore because I was thinking that if there are millions of people that are reading this scripture, it must be very important and I don't want to not know the contents of this book. And I've always had a really strong connection to God. I was, you know, brought up as a Christian. My family has many different types of religions mixed in, and some people don't even believe at all. But um, my grandparents on, bro on both sides were very active in the churches, and my mother has always been quite religious. Um, so I've attended church pretty much my whole life. Well, I started to read this Quran that I bought from the bookstore and I was pretty shocked to hear that the way it read was quite different from the scripture inside the Bible. So that kind of took me back a bit because I thought, well, if this is the word of God, it should sound the same as the Bible, but it didn't. Um, and that's really because it was written um, more recently than the Bible, and it was completely unaltered, and it was speaking in a context of the original people on the other side of the planet from where I had never been before. Um, 
in the Saudi Arabia, um, Mecca, Medina, that area, right? Anyway, I put my book away and I put it in a box in the garage and there it sat for quite some time, uh, a couple years at least. And um, later I decided I was going to give it another try. I was going to read it again and um, see how I felt about it. And so I did, I started reading it a little bit, but I didn't, still at that time, I didn't pay a lot of attention to it. I didn't focus in on it. I didn't, you know, um, I guess really study it the way I could have. And I ended up meeting a man that came to my country and he reminded me of Jesus. He reminded me of Jesus because of the way he looked and because he prayed five times a day. He was very religious. I had never seen anybody pray five times a day. And that was amazing to me. I was very attracted to that because it just made me feel more connected and closer to um, God, right? and made me feel more uh, connected and close to Jesus, peace be upon him. So um, I started learning more about the religion at that time. And then um, I think I actually, I did learn a little bit from this person um, in regards to the religion. Well, then that person, of course, went back to their own country, and um, I continued to uh, seek out more information about Islam and what it meant to be Muslim. I started reading the Quran. I, I started listening to lectures online all the time, every day. Sometimes for four hours or more, I would listen to... Mufti Mink, I would listen to Dr. Zakir, I would listen to um, Mr. Khan, I can't remember his first name. Um, and I would absorb everything I could about uh, the Muslim religion, right? And I became more and more curious. I became more and more interested in learning. And then I had at one point decided that I wanted to go to a mosque so that I could actually experience prayer there and being around um, practicing Muslims and maybe get some information and things like that. And I was not able to get a hold of anybody in uh, the mosque in my area. So what I did was I ended up going to mosque uninvited and I stumbled around and eventually a brother pointed me into the right direction to get to the women's area. So once I was up there, uh, the sisters were already praying. So I just slipped off my shoes outside the door and I went in and I just started praying with them. So I just copied what they did and I prayed along with them as best I could. And after prayer was over, they all came around me and they started talking to me, welcoming me answering some questions and offering some mentorship to me, which was uh, amazing. And I felt very welcome and very comfortable. And um, from that time forward, I attended mosque uh, more regularly. I spent time with the community. I had a couple of sisters that I could talk to and spend time with. And that was really important in my uh, reverting to Islam. So once I had felt like I had uh, gotten to a point where I had studied so much and researched it and read it, read about it, spent time at mosque, um, learned how to 
pray pretty well at that time. And, um, still needed improvement, but <laughs> I decided that I wanted to do the Shahada and become a Muslim. So what happened next was I, I couldn't get a hold of anybody again to help me do the Shahada. And I knew that I wanted to do it right away. I didn't want to wait. I um, felt kind of discouraged because I wasn't able to connect with Imam or Imam's wife or anybody to do the Shahada. And the thing that I had left out of my original story was before I actually took Shahada, I was awoken by the sound of huge wings. It sounded like um, like a giant butterfly or a giant moth or bird or something. And it was just so big and so loud. And it was right beside um, my head, my ear, where I was laying and it woke me up. And I actually was wondering, is that some type of a sign? What is that? I didn't even relate it to the fact that I was about to become uh, Muslim out of um, being a Christian and I was searching online as you know what is the meaning of the sound of wings uh, and it said all of the answers that I found said that it was a spiritual awakening moving into a higher level of religion and closeness to God right to Allah and I took that as a very amazing, wonderful blessing, a sign that I was heading in the right direction. Well, I still was not a Muslim at that time, but I found that I could become Muslim by saying the Shahada, repeating the Shahada online. So that's actually what I did. I contacted someone that did the Shahada with me uh, over the internet. And I became Muslim that day. I was very excited, very happy. And from then on, my journey through Islam has continued. I continue to learn more. I make mistakes. Um, I get confused sometimes. I fall away a little bit sometimes, um, but then I bring myself back and I try to ask more questions and I try to research and study more. And I think having a connection with other sisters, uh, other reverts has been helpful to me. And I just continue to grow as a Muslim. And one of the things is, you know, I've heard this expression and I think it's true. If you really want to learn something, teach it. And so that's kind of what I'm doing. With this YouTube channel, I'm kind of teaching about Islam and what I know about it and asking questions and researching online with all of you and telling about my experiences and repeating what I've learned to share uh, with other reverts, people that are non-Muslim, Muslims themselves, and I am having a wonderful time. I am so interested and curious and feeling connected most of the time. And um, I just appreciate, I appreciate my religion. I appreciate Allah. I appreciate all the blessings that Allah has given to me. I appreciate you all, my YouTube and Instagram community. And that's my revert story. Thank you for joining me today. If you like my story, please leave a comment below and hit the like button. Uh, if you would like to support me as a new Muslim and be a part of my community and a friend of mine, I uh, would love that. So please subscribe. And uh, thank you again for coming, everyone. Love you all. May Allah make things easy for all of you. Assalamu.